Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. I would like to solve one more problem related to electrostatic fields. Uh, the previous lecture was, in my personal view, quite remarkable in, in the fact that the result was, um, I would say, counterintuitive. <clears throat> we had a, an infinite plane charged with some um, uh, electric charge and uh, we were measuring the uh, intensity of the field and we found basically that uh, at any point in space regardless of the distance to the uh, to the plane the intensity will be the same <coughs> uh, today's problem is well in some way similar and uh, again the result is something which i would consider a little bit counterintuitive so here is the problem we will consider an empty sphere, very thin, this is the center, so this is the sphere, so it's a thin surface, empty inside, and uh, it's charged with some density sigma, which means that any area of this surface of the sphere has a charge proportional to the area itself and the coefficient of proportionality is sigma to get coulombs let's say from uh, square meters now there is a point inside that sphere uh, at distance h from the center so this is a point p and the distance h is to the center Okay, and I would like to measure the uh, intensity of the field in this particular in this particular in this particular location. Now I will do exactly the same as I did in the previous um, problem. Um, I will use certain pieces of this sphere, which are um, the same in terms of their distance to the point P is the same and uh, the angle of the vector from every point of the surface which I am considering uh, to the point P has the same vertical component. Now what is it? What is this piece of this sphere which I am talking about? Well consider, so this is the vertical z-axis, okay? Now, consider you have um, planes parallel to xy uh, uh, plane um, at the distance r from a center. So it will be something like this. Now, I will have two planes very close to each other. One is at a distance r from a center, and another is at a distance r plus dr, where dr is infinitesimal increment of this distance. So this piece is r. Now, what is uh, between these two surfaces, be between these two planes, on a spherical surface. Well, it looks like a ring, basically, right? It's not exactly the ring because the radiuses are slightly different, are, are slightly different. But anyway, we can call it a spherical ring. Now, what's uh, good about this ring is that from any point on this ring, the distance to point P is exactly the same. Let's call this point A, for instance, right on the right side edge. Uh, of this spherical ring. So, um, what we can say that the radius is exactly, um, not, not radius, the distance is exactly the same, and the uh, projection of this distance onto the z axis and the vertical is this piece, is always the same too, right? Now, what does it mean? If I will take an infinitesimal piece here, and here, and here, 
and here and here, anywhere on this ring. If these infinitesimal pieces are of the same area, which means of the same charge, they will have um, the vertical component of the intensity vector exactly the same. Why? Because from this, let's say, intensity vector depends on this charge and the distance, right? Remember the Coulomb's law? Um, we have intensity is equal to K times Q divided by um, L square. Well, L is the distance and Q is this charge. Well, actually it's a small one, differential actually, but in any case, this is the intensity. So L is the same because that's the same distance. Q is the same. These are all infinitesimally small pieces of the, uh, of, of, of the ring. And when I'm talking about the vertical component, it's basically the vector times sine of this angle, right? So if this is the vector, let's say this is the force, for instance. This is positive and this is positive, so it's a repelling force. Now, what's the vertical component of this? I have to multiply the force by the sine of this angle. And the angle exactly the same for all points on this ring. So, vertical components can be added together because they're all pointing along the z-axis. How about horizontal components of the same vector? This one. Well, all horizontal components will nullify each other because for every piece here, I will find the opposite piece on the ring which has the opposite direction of the horizontal uh, uh, of the horizontal force. Now the, the vertical will be exactly the same as this one. So all the verticals are are, are, can be combined together by integration and all the horizontal can be ignored because they will nullify each other. For every point there is an opposite one. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to calculate the total amount of um, electricity in the ring. From this we can calculate the uh, magnitude of the um, intensity, uh, uh, force of intensi uh, intensity force, and take the vertical component and then integrate. Okay? Okay, so that seems to be a relatively simple plan. First of all, what's the charge of the entire ring? That's the surface of the ring, area of the surface of the ring, times um, density. Okay, now, what is the surface of this ring? Now, from geometry, we know that, um, and you can, by the way, go to Mass14's course on the same website. It's all explained there. So, 2 pi r h is the formula for, formula for a dome. So if you have um, a sphere and you have a dome, top part of it, and if the h is the height of this dome, then this is the formula for a surface of this dome. Now, to get the ring, we have to basically take one dome, which is based on the lower one, then another one based on the upper, uh, boundary and then subtract them, right? So the bottom one has a height r minus a lowercase r. So h is equal to r minus r. Let's call it h1. h2 is equal to r minus minus r minus dr, right? So if this is distance r for the lower, and then r plus dr for the high, for the for the upper uh, cutting plate, then the difference between them is this one. So my area is equal to two pi r times h1 minus h2, which is actually dr. So my surface area is equal to two pi r dr. Now, if this is my surface area of the ring, then the charge in the ring is equal to times 
sigma. And this is a differential of Q, where Q is the charge of the entire sphere. So it's just the charge in this ring. Now if I have the charge, I can use this formula to calculate the intensity uh, uh, vector, magnitude of the intensity vector. And it's equal to, I will also use d here because it's only for this ring. So it's differential and it's equal to this k, k times this 2 pi r uh, sigma dr divided by L square. Okay, what is L square? L square is the distance between P and and A. Well, let's just think about it. Um, I can use this triangle. I need this catetus and this catetus. Now, this catetus, I can use this triangle. So, if this is the point B, let's say, then um, the distance between O and the plane is R. <coughs> the distance from O to A is radius. So I can find AB. AB square is equal to R square minus R square. So I've got the AB square. Now BP square. Now just BP. BP is equal to H minus R. So a p square is equal to <coughs> a p square is equal to um, b p square plus a b square, which is h minus r square plus r square minus r square. Let's simplify it a little bit. I will have r square. I will have h square. I will have minus hr and r square with minus r square will cancel each other. So this is my L square and this goes to a denominator. Okay, got that. Now I have to find the vertical component of this, of this vector. So the magnitude is this one. Now all these vectors are differently directed, but their vertical component is the same. And that's why we have to really, uh, that's why we can integrate the whole thing. Um, okay, so what's the vertical component? I have to multiply this vector by sine of this angle. Sine of this angle is uh, h minus r divided by L. So if I will use the z, not, not z, not, not here z, here z, so which means a z component, vertical component, I have to multiply it by the sign which is h minus r divided by the same thing but the real length, not length square, but real length, which is square of this, which means the whole thing will be in the power of three seconds, right? And this is something which I have to integrate by r from minus r to plus r. Now, the details of the, of the integration I'm not going to, 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 to have here, I would refer you to the notes for this lecture at unizor.com. Uh, it's really a simple integral. All you have to do is substitute the whole thing in, in parentheses here as x, and this is just a, a linear function of r. So it's just linear transformation, which will give you a uh, much simpler um, uh, expression for x, very easily integrated. Basically, it's a power function, no more than that. And I will write down the, the answer to this. So the answer of integration, and again you can take the details from the website,
is the following. Um, now I have a constant C, I just all these constant I will put together and will not bother about it. You see all these little things. And now in these terms the integral is equal to 2c times r square minus ih square divided by square root of x plus square root of x where x is this and I have to substitute this since I changed the x uh, r to x I have to change the limits of integration so limits of integration will be from r minus h square to r plus h square okay now so this is the answer to integration of this by x where x is this expression and that's why I put instead of r I put expression in terms of x and instead of dr correspondingly expression uh, uh, relative to dx now what is this well we have to substitute instead of x this and then minus substitute this for x that's formula of newton leibniz formula right if you have a um, indefinite integral then definite integral would be an indefinite if you will substitute corresponding values well let's do that So again, x is r square plus h square minus 2hr. That's how we substitute it, right? All right, so let's instead of x substitute r plus h square. Square of x would be r plus h. So it's 2c times r square minus h square is r minus s h times r plus and it will cancel this one so I will have r minus h plus r plus h that's the upper limit the lower limit will be and here we have to be very careful our point is inside which means h is less than r h is less than r that would, that's what it means inside because h is the difference um, it's, it's a distance actually between the point and the center and r is the radius so if that is true then square root of r minus h square would be r minus h because this is arithmetic value of the square root so I have to sub uh, subtract r minus h square divided by r minus h which is r plus h plus square root of r minus h r minus h and what will i have h h h h now r and r and minus r and minus r zero and this is what i was talking about about remarkable results intuitively you might actually think that if you are inside a sphere if you're closer to the surface from inside you might actually get more uh, force from from this side where you're closer to than from the opposite no it's exactly the same and nullify each other the whole integral is equal to zero so the intensity of the force is equal to zero there is no so if you place any charge inside a charged um, sphere it will not experience any kind of a force on it there is no repelling and no attraction to the sides of the sphere it will be completely neutral as if sphere doesn't have electricity at all what happens if our point is outside of the R outside of the sphere okay 
let's do exactly the same thing but now uh, square root of r minus h square would be equal to h minus r right because we have to have the positive value so what will be is 2c now r minus h square square minus square now with the plus will be fine plus would be r plus h so it will be r square minus h square divided by r plus h so it's r minus h plus r plus h so that's my the same thing as in the previous case but with the lower limit would be slightly different so minus now the square root of x in this case it's h minus r so if this is r square minus h square we divide by h minus r it will be minus r minus h right r square minus h square divided by r minus by, by h minus r is minus r square minus h square divided by r minus h is minus r plus h right so that's why i put minus r minus h now plus square root is h plus r uh, minus r sorry h minus h minus r so h goes out h goes out but now r you see r and r and this is minus and minus and minus so it will be four r's so it will be 8c times 4r which is equal to by 8 2c sorry it will be if i multiply now what is my c c is my so it's 2 pi k sigma r divided by 2h square but now we have uh, 4r so it will be 8 square or 4 pi r square 4 pi r square sigma k divided by h square and this is very interesting formula let's just think about what it is 4 pi r square is the total surface of the sphere as we know from geometry times sigma is the total charge because it's uniformly charged k is a Coulomb's constant now h is the distance to a center of a sphere so this formula is exactly the same as if the whole charge concentrated in the sphere would be positioned in its center only because this is now the distance to a center so it will be the total charge divided by um, the distance to a center so as if the total charge is concentrated in the center so a sphere acts on any outside object as if the total charge of a sphere is concentrated in its center um, you probably understand that it's kind of relatively easy to, to, to prove that if it's not an empty sphere but a solid sphere which obviously can be represented at, at, as many concentrical spheres infinitely thin each one and for each one the total charge uh, the, the total tendency intensity would be as if it's a, it's a total charge concentrated in the center then we can summarize them all together because all of them are acting in exactly the same way the total charge divided by uh, square distance from a center so the, for a solid uh, uh, sphere for a ball filled with electricity uniformly filled with electricity we will have exactly the same 
story. And that's the conclusion. So the empty sphere inside has no electricity. Um, outside, it's the same as if the whole sphere is basically reduced down to a point where the center is located with the total charge. That's it. Thanks very much. Uh, please do pay attention to the notes uh, on this website for this lecture uh, because it contains all these integral derivatives, etc., etc. So thanks a lot and good luck. <laughs>